if I go to my app and I switch on my lamp, well, you can probably also see it in the back, but you'll see this data, there we go. Hi guys, it's Nico, and this is the Automation Gym. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to pull data from your mini server and display it on your website in real time and update it every 60 seconds, 30 seconds, or even get a real time feedback every single time the data changes. So without further ado, let's get into it. So what we're going to need is some information. The very first thing that we want to know is what kind of data are we looking to pull. In my case, it's going to be very simple. I just want something that is going to be changing, or at least I can change on my side. So I'm going to be pulling some temperature information for my room, as you can see, not too hot, not too cold, just how I like it. And I'm also going to show you how to pull information from a block. So my bedside lamp is plugged into a smart socket again, and whenever it's switched on, I can see it's pulling, let's say six watts worth of energy. So how do we do that? And what is the easiest way to? Now, with your mini server, because we already have the app, we already have uh, different information in terms of how to, well, what is currently happening with the mini server in a JSON format. And we can also request data to be sent in a JSON format from the mini server. Well, every single block or every single input has that information already built in and they have their own unique ID or unique identifier, which is going to be able to, well, we'll be able to point to, and it's going to feed back some information from the device. Now, how do we get that? If you go to your device status, right click on your mini server, there's this show locksapp3.json file that we want to grab. Now in here, it doesn't look too pretty and there's too much information. So if we just grab that one, we can then go online to jsonly.com, which is simply going to validate our JSON file. It's going to make it look super pretty and nice. So if we drop the file in here and validate JSON, then you'll be able to see, now it's a bit more structured, so it's easier to read, easier to look at. Now, in my case, what kind of information we're we looking for? Well, the first thing is we want the temperature from the smart socket. So if we go back to our file and you can click in here, control F and just type in temperature. There it is. And you can see also further down marked in yellow, there's some more data about temperature. So I'm definitely not looking for the outdoor temperature. I'm also not looking for, let's see what else we have. Oh, for the weather server, no, no, not this one again, not this one. So maybe the very first one we had, the one all the way up at the top, is the correct one. So this is the UUID, the unique identifier of that temperature sensor. And this is the long code that is associated with it. So the way to pull information from the mini server is that you can send a command and you can kind of request that data. You can request the state of the device and see, hey, what is actually going on? So all we're going to do is we're going to open a browser. We're going to go to the IP of the mini server. You can see I was already doing some something with it. And we can go to JDEV, which stands for JSON Developer, SPS, IO for input and output. And then in here, we want to put our information for the unique identifier. Then after that, we can just grab state or it might be status, we're going to check. And what we want to do is, oh, data. So I maybe don't know my password. <laughs> Happens. Cool, data. There we go. And as you can see, no, it's not state, it's status. And it's not pulling any information whatsoever. Perfect. So there's one of two things that could have been happening. The first one is maybe this is the wrong UUID. And there's another way that we can quickly check the UUID of the device. 
if we go to the mini servers web interface pull data boom if you are visualizing that specific element for example i am the temperature of the bedroom you can click on it and up in here you will also be able to see that information so i can copy it the unique identifier and then we can try again going to the mini server 192 jdev sps io unique identifier and then we're looking for let's see is it state let me just double check my code is it going to make more sense yes it is called state Again, we want to authenticate. Pull data. And now we can see it. So here's the command that we've sent. And then here's the value that is coming back with, which is at 18.8 degrees. And if we go back to config, we can see, yep, that is accurate. It is currently 18.8 degrees. The sensor is pulling. And because this is now being pulled back in a JSON file, we can go to our website and I've very quickly made a very, very short template for you to be able to use. And with this one, what I'm doing, all I'm doing is I just have a very, very simple uh, vanilla uh, script, which means that there's only HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And then as you can see, we're pulling, we're sending that same command with the unique identifier and we're pulling the information then once we pull the information, we also need to authenticate. So what you also need to do within config is you go in here, you create a new user. Let's go users and permissions. I've created a user that's called data. And that user also needs to have web interface permissions and permissions to every single room or at least to the rooms or virtual inputs or digital inputs or anything else that you're going to be pulling data from. So if you go to manage permissions, you'll be able to see, I gave him permissions to every single room, plus the web interface. You don't necessarily need to give them permission to change their own password, but as you can see, I keep forgetting my own password, so it's a good idea to have it. Now, without information, we can create a template like this one that is going to authenticate every single time we're asked. And after that, we're going to parse the information that we're getting back. We're going to look for the value and then we're going to display that value on a screen. And how that looks is, as you can see, I have a local port 5500. So I'm running a uh, website on my local machine to be able to display that. And if I go to it, you can see, yep, currently it's 18.8. Now, the 18.8 degrees is not something that I can change. However, if I go to my app and I switch on my lamp, well, you can probably also see it in the back, but you'll see this data, there we go. The current draw is going to be changing. So yes, the lamp is drawing six watts at the moment and that data is displayed in real time. If I go and switch it off, because I have a pulling cycle of currently 10 seconds, and just so I'm not pulling too much information from the mini server, in about 10 seconds time, we're going to be able to see this going from 0.6 to zero kilowatts because it's not pulling anything. And with a template like this one, you can pull as much information as you want at any time. Uh, the mini server is not really struggling, plus you're not really harming the device or harming the SD card with too much statistics because we're pulling data from it, we're not reading, we're not writing information to it. Now, without information, this is obviously happening on the local server and we're pulling data from the mini server locally. However, you can use the cloud DNS. The only thing that you need to keep in mind is if you're using a locks on cloud, which looks like this. So dns.locksoncloud.com forward slash your mini server serial number. Whenever you want to pull that request, you need to wait for the authentication. So it's going to give you some information back with a port. And then after that, you can do the JDEF SPS 
io unique identifier port slash state again we need to authenticate obviously data and that is going to do exactly the same and actually you can see temperature did raise by 0.1 degree and that's also reflected in here so you can do it locally you can do it externally obviously locally is going to be a little bit faster you're not going to rely on uh, the internet connection however you can do both thank you for watching the code for this is going to be down in the description if you like the video leave a like and if you want to see more videos like this one just drop a comment below and let me know what you want to watch cheers guys see you in the next one